What's going on everybody? This is Jaden with How to Apple. And in this video, I wanna welcome you to the first episode of Apple Life, where I do just that, teach you how to live the Apple life. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the things you must do before buying a used iPhone or iDevice on any social networking, Facebook, whatever. You need to follow these tips so you don't get scammed, so stay tuned. I'm gonna use the help of my iPhone over here and I'm gonna show you a couple things that you might wanna do before buying the iPhone. So step number one, or tip number one, let's say it that way, is check the storage of your iPhone. Now, sometimes you, they might say that this is a 64 gigabyte or a 128 gigabyte, maybe even 256. You might wanna check that for yourself. So this is how you do it. I'm gonna go over to settings. And when you scroll down, you'll see general. Click on that at the top, you'll see about, and right there, this will give you some information that you'll need before buying your iPhone. If you look where it says capacity right there, that's my capacity, 64 gig. So I have a 64 gigabyte iPhone 10. Um, if they tell you that it's anything other than that, you need to check that just so you're not walking away with the iPhone that's way, that's not what you, what you thought you were buying, let's say it that way. So tip number two, just in case they want to tell you that the phone is maybe two months old or whatever, if only it's only been used for two times, it's only been used for a month, whatever, I want you to check the battery health of your iPhone just to make sure your phone doesn't die at like 40% and or it doesn't hold a charge, doesn't last you to 12 noon. So this is how you do that. We're going to go back into settings. We will scroll down till you see battery. And you'll see where it says battery health beta right there. Now, I think you may have to have iOS 11.3 at least. I'm not sure, but just try this out. If it's there, good. If it ain't, <laughs> you're going out on a limb. So I'm gonna click on battery health. That'll show you the maximum capacity of your battery. Even though my phone says it's charged to 100%, really, it can only hold 93% of its original charge when it first came out of the factory. So as time goes on, this number is gonna drop. That's just because rechargeable batteries, they go bad after a while. So check that to make sure you don't have a bad battery on your iPhone that you're gonna be buying so you can actually last, you know, hold a good charge. So that's tip number two. So tip number three will be to make sure they are logged out of their iCloud account on the device. Because the reason why is Apple has this thing called the iCloud lock or activation lock. And as long as they're logged into their iPhone with their iCloud account, if they have find my iPhone turned on, then even if you deleted everything off the phone and tried to set it up as new, it's going to ask for their iCloud account. And you don't want to, let me unlock my phone. <laughs> you don't want to uh, get home. Let's say you drove three hours. You don't want to get home and find out that you need their password to their iCloud or else literally the phone is a brick. So you need to do this. So what we're going to do is go into settings. Right at the top, if you see their name, then they're still logged in. So we're going to click on that and they need to log out of iCloud. You're going to hit sign out. Now right here, what it's saying is you have to put in their iCloud, uh, their iCloud password in order to turn off Find My iPhone because you can't log out of an, an Apple device without turning off Find My iPhone. So have them put their password in. Once you hit turn off, that'll sign them out and you should be good to go. So I have about four more things to show you and let's go ahead and run through those. So tip number four is to go ahead and wipe the device, reset the device, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. This will clear out all of their data, um, pretty much let you set the phone up as your own. So I'm gonna to go to settings. I am going to go to general. And I'm gonna scroll all the way down. You will see where it says reset, right above the shutdown. Click reset. Now I'm not gonna do this, but I'm just showing you how to do it. And you're gonna hit erase all content and settings. Click on that. It'll ask you back up. You just wanna erase now. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not gonna do that. So 
that's that. Once that is reset, then go ahead and try to set the phone up as your own. Now, this brings me into tip number five. While you're setting your iPhone up, a good thing is go ahead and put your SIM card into that device because this will help check two things to make sure that the iPhone is not blocked because if you try to buy an iPhone, let's say with AT&T and you have US Cellular, then that device may not work on US Cellular. However, if they paid off their iPhone and it is unlocked, meaning it will be able to be used with any other cell phone carrier. So you wanna go ahead and put your SIM card in to that phone and then try to set it up. Um, what'll happen is if you, once you set it up, I'm sorry, in the process of setting it up, it'll tell you if that SIM is invalid. So if it says that, don't buy the phone because it's not probably not gonna work with your uh, cell phone company. But if you do put the SIM card in and it does work, go ahead and continue to set it up. It should ask you to log in with your iCloud. Go ahead and make sure that is done and make sure your iCloud is logged in, set up as a new iPhone um, until you get to the home screen. So that was tip number five. Tip number six will be to go ahead and make a phone call. Uh, you know, if the person, obviously they should have a phone if they're selling you their phone. But now I do notice that this is for an iPhone. I'm giving you all the tips for an iPhone, but these things do apply for an iPad as well. Obviously you're not gonna make a phone call, but you will go through all the steps that I just said on an iPad as well. But for an iPhone, put your SIM card in, make a phone call, make sure it works. Because like I said, you don't want it to be blacklisted because they could, they can do a replacement. Let's say I had an iPhone 10. I can do a warranty replacement and get an iPhone 10 and then sell my old iPhone 10 that I claimed was stolen, sell it to somebody else. Now, AT&T, which who, that's the company I have, they would actually blacklist that iPhone and that iPhone will not be able to be used on anything. It'll be reported stolen. So when you make a phone call, that's pretty much clearing you, making sure, once again, that it's not blacklisted. One more thing I want you to check, and this is the final step, is to check the internet. Go ahead and go to Safari, open up something, try to you know just browse the internet because um, you wanna make sure that your internet's working. That way you know that your phone will work when you leave because I'm, I'm telling you, it's happened to me before. I've driven three hours to get an iPhone and I just wasn't on my game like I should have been. Got all the way home, something wasn't working right, something wasn't, yeah. Something wasn't working right and the person pretty much screwed me over and was like, whatever, she didn't answer her phone. I called her from another phone number and she answered, which showed me she was ignoring me, but then she hung up. So I'm just trying to help y'all from getting scammed. I don't want it to happen to y'all. So there you have it guys. Those are my tips for you before you buy a used iPhone or iPad or any other iDevice. I don't want y'all to get scammed, but I do wanna help y'all out. So if you like this video, leave a comment below, uh, give it a like, subscribe to my channel so you can learn more of how to Apple without the E. And that's the first video for Apple Life, where I teach you how to live the Apple life. Deuces.